Farmers in Australia are under siege. Fields and orchards are being overrun by more than 17 million wild parrots, including cockatoos, corellas, and gallas, which are destroying crops and inflicting millions of dollars in damage. Farmers now have a chance thanks to science, technology and well-coordinated initiatives, whereas traditional techniques are failing. An address yesterday after an invasion by thousands of corellas. Absolutely a national crisis. You're going to lose all your small and medium scale farmers, livestock farmers. Wildlife management is changing forever as a result of this extraordinary fight against cunning, unrelenting birds a rising nationwide concern. Australia is facing a major wildlife management issue, the rapid rise of wild parrot populations across key farming regions. Over 17 million birds such as gallas, corellas, sulphur-crested cockatoos, rainbow parrots and budgerigars now flock across farms, orchards and pastures. Once naturally limited by drought, food shortages and predators, these parrots have thrived in human-altered grounds, becoming both admired natives and destructive pests. Flocks capable of stripping entire pastures in hours. Grain, fruit and nut crops are heavily impacted, while pastures are damaged by rooting. Their strong beaks also destroy irrigation, cables and structures. Noisy roosts and droppings cause health and safety issues in towns. This population boom is largely driven by year-round access to food, water and shelter conditions created by agriculture, while natural predators are few. Economic losses in Victoria, New South Wales and South Australia run into the hundreds of millions each year. Integrated strategies are being adopted. These combine deterrence, monitoring and targeted control to reduce damage while supporting long-term coexistence with local species. Regulatory and policy structure. Managing wild parrots in Australia is shaped by laws that protect native species while enabling farmers to address major crop damage. Under Victoria's Wildlife Act 1975, species like galas, corellas and sulphur-crested cockatoos are preserved. Farmers must first use non-lethal methods such as scaring devices, mesh and habitat changes to repel them. If these fail, landholders can apply for an authority to control wildlife ATCW permit, which outlines which species can be targeted, how many, and under what conditions. In certain high-impact areas, Governor in Council GIC, orders may declare specific species unprotected wildlife in defined areas for limited periods, allowing controlled shooting but still banning inhumane methods like poisoning or unsafe trapping. This system promotes coordinated, humane and adaptive management. Landholders are urged to track their efforts, evaluate success and share insights to support wider regional plans. The aim is to reduce damage while sustaining bird populations, not to eradicate them. Australia's approach blends law, science and local knowledge, ensuring management is ethical, effective and innovative. Fundamental Management Guidelines Australia confronts rising parrot populations through Integrated Wildlife Management IWM, a science-based strategy backed by government, farmers and ecologists. IWM blends physical barriers, behavioural repellents and limited culling, all within strict legal and welfare guidelines. One method alone is not effective. Success depends on understanding parrot behaviour and combining techniques over time. Administration starts with studying flock dynamics, feeding, breeding, movement and agility. Parrots quickly adjust to repeated deterrence, so rotating scare tactics, modifying habitats and timing interventions to seasonal patterns are essential to prevent adjustment. Monitoring plays a vital role. Farmers track damage, parrot activity and control outcomes, refining strategies as needed. This adaptive approach improves efficiency and long-term success. Regional coordination is also crucial. Since parrots move freely across landscapes, isolated efforts fail. Cooperative action between landholders and local authorities enables synchronised, large-scale control. IWM offers a flexible and practical framework that balances farming needs with ecological sensitivity. It promotes harmony, reduces economic losses and provides a sustainable path forward for managing parrot overabundance in Australian agriculture. Deterrent barriers and exclusion strategies. Among the tools for managing wild parrots, physical barriers is the most immediate and reliable method to protect valuable crops and facilities. Unlike behavioural deterrence, exclusion physically blocks access, reducing losses in orchards, vineyards, horticultural plots and storage resources. 
Exclusion methods include protective netting over fruit trees and vines, sheathing or wrapping irrigation lines and timber posts, and installing anti-roosting devices on buildings. Confined screens around silos and feed stores prevent corruption, while replacing chewable materials with metal or PVC provides long-term protection. Despite effectiveness, installation and maintenance can be costly, so farmers prioritize critical areas where the economic return is highest. Exclusion also supports preventative management by removing food or shelter opportunities, inspiring parrots to move elsewhere, and reducing local population pressure. When united with deterrence and habitat modification, exclusion forms a core pillar of integrated wildlife management. It offers immediate protection, aligns with safe legal requirements, and contributes to long-term strategies that minimize the need for reactive or lethal control, helping farmers sustainably manage Australia's growing parrot populations. Dispersal and prevention methods. Scaring and inhibition are key strategies for managing wild parrots, especially in broadacre farms and orchards where physical exclusion is impractical. These methods make areas appear unsafe or erratic, redirecting birds rather than eliminating them. Farmers use gas guns, pyrotechnics, predator kites, balloons with eye-like markings, recorded alarm calls, drones, laser beams and motion-activated alarms to trigger instinctive fear responses. Effectiveness depends on variation and erraticness. Parrots are intelligent and quickly habituate, so devices must be moved, rotated and combined to maintain impact. Integrating sound, light and motion creates a multi-sensory deterrent that is harder for flocks to ignore. Occasionally, selective shooting, where legally allowed, bolsters the threat, linking scare devices to real risk and enhancing psychological impact. Defence requires constant adaptation to factors such as crop maturity, weather and local bird pressures. In entrenched areas, these methods provide short-term relief, buying time for structural interventions like habitat modification or exclusion. When incorporated into an integrated wildlife management plan, scaring and deterrence combine immediate behavioural disruption with long-term strategies that reduce environmental attractiveness. Together, they form a vital tool for protecting crops, minimising economic losses and managing Australia's growing parrot populations viably ecosystem and food regulation, Australia addresses rising parrot populations through Integrated Wildlife Management IWM, a science-led strategy supported by government, farmers and ecologists. IWM combines physical barriers, behavioural deterrence and limited fatal control, all guided by legal and welfare standards. No single solution works alone. Effective management relies on understanding parrot behaviour and using complementary methods over time. Management begins with studying parrot ecology, feeding habits, movement patterns, breeding and adaptability. These intelligent birds quickly adapt to repetitive tactics, so rotating scare devices, modifying habitats and aligning actions with seasonal behaviour are key to avoiding habituation. Monitoring is central to IWM. Farmers track flock activity, damage levels and the impact of control methods, adjusting strategies as needed. This adaptive approach improves efficiency and durable outcomes. Equally important is regional coordination. Because parrots move across properties, isolated actions are ineffective. Coordinated efforts between landholders and local authorities enable broader, more consistent control. IWM provides a balanced, sustainable framework that safeguards farming while supporting native bird conservation. Precision control and strengthening, lasting control of wild parrots goes beyond deterrence and exclusion. It requires reducing what draws them to farms. Cleaning spilled grain, sealing storage and managing post-harvest stubble limit food sources. Coordinating sowing and harvesting distributes bird pressure across fields. Vegetative control, enclosed livestock feed and decoy feeding zones further reduce attractants. These habitat and food strategies work alongside scaring and exclusion, discouraging congregation and redirecting flocks. Regular application over time changes parrot behaviour, stabilises local populations and protects high-value crops. By combining proactive habitat management with reactive measures, farmers achieve sustainable control while balancing farm output with green responsibility. Evaluation and synchronisation. Effective parrot management needs a smart strategy and teamwork. The Victorian Wildlife Management Plan suggests that farmers create damage management plans. These plans track which parrot species are causing problems, what kind of damage they're doing, and what methods are being used to control them. Supervision helps farmers see what's working, spot bird patterns, and adjust tactics as needed, 
especially with changing seasons or crop cycles. Working together with nearby farms is just as important. Since parrots move around freely, one farm's efforts can fail if neighbours aren't on board. By coordinating scare methods and control timing, farmers can prevent birds from simply shifting to nearby areas. Using shared data, this smarter strategy helps reduce damage, improve success rates, and strike a better balance between farming and conservation. Economic and tactical impacts. Parrot damage causes major financial losses ranging from crop destruction to infrastructure repair, costing farmers and regional economies hundreds of millions annually. In response, governments invest in research, aid services and subsidies for tools like netting, drones and smart scare devices. These efforts aim to boost the effectiveness of non-lethal control while minimising long-term costs. Farmers using holistic plans combining deterrence, habitat management and selective reinforcement report up to 50-60% less crop damage in some areas. However, challenges persist. High setup costs for tech like drones or netting can be tough for small farms, and parrots' intelligence demands constant updates to control methods. Still, integrated wildlife management is now the national standard. It blends science, strategy and durability, helping farmers protect crops while coexisting with native species. A visionary model for tomorrow. Australia's response to wild parrot overpopulation showcases a sophisticated, science-led strategy that balances agricultural productivity with native species conservation. Rather than relying on reactive or removal-based methods, which are biologically and ethically flawed, the focus is on sustainable population control. The aim is to reduce economic losses while maintaining the ecological value of parrots in the landscape. At the heart of this approach is legal abidance. Landholders must operate under official permits, such as authorities to manage wildlife, ensuring all actions are ethical, regulated and responsible. This legal foundation safeguards native species while allowing for both lethal and non-lethal interventions where necessary. Scientific knowledge, particularly behavioural ecology, plays a critical role. Understanding the habits and intelligence of parrots like gallas, corellas and sulphur-crested cockatoos informs management options. Techniques such as scaring devices, decoy feeding zones and habitat changes are tailored to natural bird behaviours, enhancing their effectiveness and reducing reliance on invasive methods. Technology is steadily central. Drones, motion sensors and remote monitoring allow real-time tracking of flocks, while predictive models help time interventions for maximum impact. These tools, combined with traditional deterrents like netting and exclusion devices, form a flexible, multi-layered system. How do you assess their plans? Have you ever had any experience with things like this where you are from? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you'd like any tweaks.